I want you to go on to michaelsavage.com, but I warn you, I warn you, before you download this story, I warn you, if you're a depressed person, don't do it. If you're an angry person who thinks he's going to go off like a, like a rocket or go postal, don't read this story. Because it's going to get you so crazy that you're liable to commit some violence, and I don't want you to do it. Violence only begets more violence. Racially charged murder trials getting scant national press. It's on michaelsavage.com. Christian and Newsom, that's a white couple, young couple, they were out on a dinner date in Knoxville, Tennessee. Nice kids, kids next door. Carjacked, kidnapped, tortured, raped, murdered, set on fire by a group of blacks. According to published news reports, the two were tortured at length while they were alive in each other's presence. They were then strangled and shot. I don't think I can even read this now. I don't know whether to cry or scream. Newsom's mutilated and burned remains were found along a railroad track the following day. Two days later, Christian's battered and burned body was found in a trash bin. The suspects were quickly arrested and charged with carjacking, kidnapping, rape, premeditated murder, theft, and robbery. It's a gigantic story. Not covered. Wolf Blitzer, that empty piece of garbage. Wolf Blitzer, that thing that should never... <clears throat> I can get myself in real trouble right now if I actually told you what I think of these people. So I'll go on with the story. They're talking about the fact that the Associated Press wire stories on the killing were carried by Knoxville news outlets, CBS News and Fox News, but other major media wouldn't touch it at all. Search of the Nexus database found that the May 8th story on this website, aside from this one, no other major media outlets have reported the case. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, and New York Times would not return calls. They wouldn't cover it. However, conservative talk host Michael Savage said on his May 9 radio program that the Knoxville situation got me sick. So they called up a professor of journalism, don't you know, by the name of Robert Zelnick. And he's at Boston University. Probably dresses correctly, Mr. Zelnick. Oh, yeah, dresses British. Knows how to make a tie. Knows how to uh, smile at a cocktail party with politicians, Mr. Zelnick. Moved himself up from the needle trades in one, two generations. The professor of journalism at Boston University, Mr. Zelnick, told Cybercast News Services that the Knoxville murders, as gruesome as they were, need a strong peg to reach a national audience. He said racism would certainly be one. Celebrity involvement would be another. But the coincidence of white victims and black perpetrators doesn't pass muster. Though the coincidence of white perpetrators and black victims might because of its relative infrequency. And so there it is. So Zelnick says the reason it hasn't been picked up is because it's not, it's not sexy. After all, she's just a white girl and he's a white boy. And they're just black guys who, well, they just did him, that's all. Not only did they do them, they did them in a way that you wouldn't even see in Iraq. But that doesn't make it to the New York Times. Instead, they show someone with Down syndrome on the front page last week having a coat put on her back by her father. Uh, showing you something about Down syndrome as the lead story, for example. Where are the two megaphone reverends, Sharpton and Jackson? I would think that raping, mutilating, torturing, and setting people afire is worse than a radio insult. And yet the good reverends are nowhere to be found. Isn't that interesting?